So, hopefully no one made the mistake of just thinking we have to previously do whatever I've shown you. So, times when it's at rest, you get 0 equals 2t squared minus 14t plus 20, which gives you that t is t is 5 and t equals 2. Okay, that's how you get those. Sh sh sh. Now, part B, although we've, although we've just been looking at differentiation, I deliberately put this one here to make you realize you do not always have to do differentiation. You have to look at the whole function and see how it behaves. They love doing these kinds of questions to really test your understanding of graphs, not just being able to follow a procedure. So this particular graph, we know that it crosses at 2 and at 5, and we've just found out that it crosses at, well, we can see it crosses at 20 when t is equal to 0. So we get this kind of quadratic that we've got here of 20, 2, and 5. The restriction for t is between 0 and 4. So I'm not interested in any of this part of the graph. I want all this part of the graph. I want to know what's its maximum speed in that bit that we've got there. Now, there are five marks for this because some of them are from doing differentiation to check whether is this the maximum speed, because it's talking about speed, which means we don't care if it's positive or negative, or is this the maximum speed down here? Now, you technically don't even need the differentiation because it's a quadratic. We know that this point will be in between 2 and 5, which is 3.5. So you don't need differentiation. But differentiation, if you differentiated v equals 2t squared minus 14t plus 20, we know that dv dt will be 0 at the minimum. So I'm going to just show you the long way, 4t minus 14. If I make that equal 0, you get t is equal to 3.5, which is exactly as we predicted, because we know that quadratics are um, symmetrical. When I put t equals 3.5 into v, you get 2 times 3.5 squared minus 14 times 3.5 plus 20. And that gave you what, Taylor? Was it minus 8? Yeah. And that gave you minus 8. So you need something to say, well, the maximum speed is between 20 and minus 8. So, sorry, the speed is between 20 and minus 8. So, Oh, really? Maybe you just put it in the calculator wrong. Maybe. So minus 4.5. Um, let's change that. So the maximum speed is 20 meters per second. Now, the mark scheme for this, this is from an older version of the exam, just to show you where the marks come from. You get one for saying that the velocity is 20. You get another mark, three marks, for actually exploring to find out whether this is another, this is a maximum or, or not. And then you just get the last mark for actually confirming that it's 20. So there needs to be some evidence of like problem solving with that kind of graph that we've got there as well. OK? Um, so I deliberately put one in that was a bit of a trick, because I need you to be thinking in that kind of way. Now, for your homework, uh, let me just shrink this down so I can fit them both in. But it's really important, if you don't listen to me in this point, guys, you're not going to know how to do a couple of these questions, because they're harder. So I'm going to quickly show you a couple of questions that I want us to have a look at. Um, so this first one, you'd think question one would be nice and easy, but I just want to point out a couple of things. You may like to annotate your questions to help you for this one, okay? This one, they've told you what the displacement is, and it says determine the time at which P is moving with minimum velocity. Well, minimum velocity is when, if you had a velocity time graph, we would say that dv dt was 0. In other words, the acceleration is 0. So for this first part, where it's saying find the time when it's moving with minimum velocity, we're trying to say when is the acceleration 0, not when is the velocity 0. So you're going to need to differentiate this twice. For part a, you're going to need to differentiate it twice and then make it equal 0. Then you can find the velocity displacement, and then you can find the velocity. So this first one, you need to make sure that you differentiate it twice for part A. That's something that I think people will make a mistake on in that question. Part, not part four, question four is a weird kind of question, and I'm going to do it now. If you ever want to watch it back on the video, then you can do, and that, that question is done a lot easier. 
But this one is kind of weird. It says a particle moves along the x-axis. Its velocity, um, blah, 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 in this is given as v equals 2t squared minus 3t plus 5. And it says that t is greater than or equal to 0. Show that p never comes to rest. Well, I'm going to investigate by finding out maybe what the acceleration is. If I find the acceleration and I differentiate this, I get 4t minus 3. Now, there's enough information here to show that it never comes to rest. I'm going to say this but not write this down. When t is 0, the velocity is 5. And if t is a positive number, the acceleration will always be positive. OK, because if you put 0 in here, not 0 in here, when you put 1 in here and some of the other values, you're going to start to see that it's always accelerating. So how can it ever go to 0? So you might also need to ch check where the minimum is as well. So there's a few things you might need to do for these kinds of questions to think really carefully. And I'm going to put those on Padlet, the ones that you need to do, OK?